I call the member for right. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. And, uh, the MP I speak uh, on today is obviously the urgent need for the responsibility of fiscal management and the upcoming budget to deliver real reforms for working people. Uh, we should change the, the title of this segment of, from MPI to the Comedy Hour, Madam Deputy Speaker, because what we just heard from the last speaker, the member for Throsby, was nothing but uh, comical, absolutely comical. Before coming to this place, I was a successful transport operator in Queensland, and prior to that I was a banker. So being part of the Liberal uh, family on this side of the House, I welcome every day, every day the opportunity to debate the real issues of fiscal management of this country and let Australians know, let Australians know, not the spin, spin, spin that Labor would have you believe, but the real facts about how this economy could be run better. Um, First, before I, uh, before I speak about a couple of things, I want to just pick up one of the points that was made uh, by the member for Shiftley about Australia's AAA credit rating, because I think that's interesting for, for, uh, for people to get their head around. Why is it that we have a AAA credit rating at the moment? Why is it? Because you know, when, when, when we've got record debt, uh, enormous deficits, enormous deficits, but yet when we were in government, when we were in government, we had Yes, money in the bank, money in the bank, and no debt. So why is it that we would not have been in a stronger position when we had money in the bank and no debt, and today a heap of debt and no capacity to repay it? Why is it that we have a better credit rating today than we had then? Because, Madam Deputy Speaker, I'll tell you why. Standard and Poor's and Moody's, what they, they have is what a thing is called comparative, comparative credit ratings. So as Australia is compared to its placing in the rest of the world, and as the, the major economies of this globe have softened, they've basically gone to hell in a handbasket, Madam Deputy Speaker. As they have softened, it has increased the trajectory of Australians. So that's why, that's why we have a AAA credit rating, and I can assure you that the false hypnotic, hypno, hypnotic um, phrases that come out of this government with reference to their fiscal management um, are, are a joke. Um, I'd also like to bring your attention, Madam Deputy Speaker, to the Madam for Shifley's comments earlier this week that, uh, that they will have the fastest fiscal consolidation in four decades. But see, that's all this government can do. All they can do is talk about what is going to happen, the old gunner, what we will do. They can't talk about their track record because their track record is pretty ordinary. And I will get to the amount of deficits and deficits because I know the member for Throsby is interested to know some of the records that his government has been in charge of, and that is record debt and record deficits. But when it comes to the fastest fiscal consolidation, I just want to break down for you what fiscal consolidation is. It's the capacity for a government to pay back uh, payback debt. So, with reference to Labor and its out of control spending, one can draw an analogy that their fastest fiscal consolidation that may happen sometime in the future is similar to a contestant going on the biggest loser but jamming 50 kilos, 50 <laughs> kilos on before he goes on the show in order to rip it off quicker. A fiscal, con a fiscal consolidation <laughs> from Labor is only as a result of this enormous amount of blowout. Yeah, Madam Speaker, the, the Labor Party right. forecasted that their budget surplus or their budget deficit, the one that's coming up real soon in, in, in a couple of weeks' time, 18 months ago or 12 months ago, they forecasted that it was going to be $12 billion. Now, these people want you to believe that. They want you to believe that they have the capacity to forecast. They said it was going to be $12 million. Six months later, six months later, uh, in the budget figures, Madam Deputy Speaker, 12.6. Just a lazy 10 bill, guys. Just a lazy 10 bill. You got that wrong by that much. But that's not all. There's steak knives with this deal as well, Mr. Speaker. There's steak knives with this. That's not all. Just recently, on the recent MyEFO docs, the 12 billion went to 22 billion. Now it's at 37 billion. So this is the capacity of a government who wants to stand on a stage and talk about fiscal responsibility when it comes in a period of not only just over 12 months cannot hit the side of a barn when it comes to forecasting deficits, Madam Deputy Speaker. But the only thing that we can see here, the only thing that we've seen in the last parliamentary sitting period, are three common traits that have appeared with the bills that have come before the House. One, the majority of the bills that have come before the House end up somehow giving more power to their union mates. Two, they take money out of the pockets of mums and dads and small businesses, and I'll explain to you how they do that. And three, somewhere woven into the bills that come before the House, yes, you can bet on it, 
There's more bureaucracy and there's more compliance measures, Madam Deputy Company Speaker. tax rate, Madam Deputy Speaker, under the is going to go from 30 per cent to 29, a 1 per cent, a 1 per cent decrease, and, and, we, and we take a bit of heat over, over, uh, over, over opposing it. And I want to share with you why. I asked my guys in my office to ring some of the businesses within a couple of k radius of my office, and these are actual figures, and I, I really want you to get your head around it. It was a bloke who has building supply business. He's got a payroll of 570 grand. Payroll of 570 grand. Last year, his taxable income was 40,000 bucks. So what that equates to in this world is that he'll get a company tax cut of what? 400 bucks. 400 bucks. But he will potentially be facing a $17,100 increase in his superannuation. Now, Labor, Madam Deputy Speaker, this government would have you think that they're paying for the superannuation. I can assure you it will be coming out of the pockets of small businesses of this country, the hard-working mums and dads and families and the people of my electorate of right. Then we went around the other corner and found the motor mechanic. He's got a payroll of $500,000, taxable income of seventy five dollars What's his, his benefit? The hand goes in the pocket, he gets his 750, 750 bucks, but the potential super liability out of the other pocket is 15 grand. 15 grand. Over the six year period, you do your maths, it's 15 grand. You can't have a 3% increase, Minister, you can't have a 3% increase and not cost anything.